we're harvesting dinner, and we're planting a few flowers. Hello and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Today we are going to start planting our flower seeds. According to my planner here, I need to start planting the flowers on um, the end of February, basically. 226 is what I have in here for some of the flowers that take eight to 12 weeks to germinate and get to a large enough size to go out into our gardens and our flower beds and all of those type places. And so I use my garden journal here to track when I need to plant things. And according to this garden journal and when I wrote down when I need to start them based on my last frost date, it's time to start planting flowers. And so that's what we're going to do today. Now, if you're interested in the garden journal, there will be a link to it in the description below. You can find this on Amazon and it's actually very reasonably priced in, a, in the grand scheme of things. But the, the journal says we need to plant flowers, so we're going to plant flowers today. And we're also going to go ahead and plant a few more cool season vegetables, leafy green vegetables. And so let's start with what all we're going to plant today. Now, when we get done planting all these trays up, we're also gonna do a mini harvest because I need to get some things out of the indoor growth space and I wanted to bring you with me. But the first thing we need to do is get these seeds started. So let me share with you what I'm planting for the flowers. Um, I had to think long and hard and try to think about how I wanted to do flowers this year. Um, I typically, typically grow the same varieties, um, but they usually have a different color or a different type petal or something like that. And this year I'm gonna focus my flowers down to just a couple colors as well for my flower beds. For the garden, I'm taking any and everything I can get, but we're not worried about most of the garden flowers yet. These are for my flower beds. These are just for the beauty. They're going to be doing some work too, bringing in those beneficial insects, but that's not the primary purpose for these flowers that we're planting today. So we're going to plant several different types of petunias. And I can't pronounce them all, so I'm going to just show them to you. We will be planting this one here. Isn't that pretty? This one uh, gets about a foot tall and the blooms are only two to two and a half inch blooms, but they're all flowery and fluttery and they're really pretty. They're frayed and ruffled. We're gonna also do, and you notice that's kind of pink and white mixed together. And then we're gonna do this one here that is more of a purple mix. It's called triumphant mix. It's the different types of petunias there and purples and pinks and really dark colors there. Now these, these are really, really cool. Again, they only get to one or two feet high, but they are smothered, according to this, in five to seven inch flowers. And some of them are double petaled. So this is gonna be really, really pretty. I saw this and I'm like, I gotta try it, I gotta try it. And then we're gonna do um, a lace veil petunia and I just had to have a little more white in there so that's what this one is all about and this one is um, three inch blooms um, and it says they can have a little ruffle on them as well let me show it to you one more time see they're kind of ruffled around the edges of the blooms and that's all of the petunias that I'm growing this year I'm staying away from the reds, I'm staying away from the yellows, even though I wanted to, but we're not doing those today. And we are only focusing on the pinks, the purples, the plums, and the whites. Now I am going to try to grow a few wax begonias, but I'm only doing white this year. Begonias need eight to 12 weeks to germinate, and they do take a very long time. 
So we're going to try to do some white begonias. And then in my shaded areas, and I do have quite a few shaded areas around the house and the garden uh, with some of our trees, I'm going to do some coleus. And this will be the only place where you'll see some reds and some greens and some pinks and some lime greens. So it's a mix. I've grown it every year now. This will be the third year in a row I've grown it and they get massive. I have these huge like three foot plants in my front yard in the shaded areas where I grow them and all different colors and shades of the coleus. And I get some of these volunteer the next year. So for the coleus, that's what we'll be doing. And then there's one garden. I think it's just one. Yeah, there's one garden. Um, flower that I need to start now because it takes so long and that's the gazinia the gazinia and these are really cute and they only get about nine inches high which is perfect to plant alongside tomato plants and other vegetables and what I like about the gazinia is that they close at night these big beautiful blooms I'm gonna show it to you one more time those blooms close at night and then they open up in the morning when they get hit by the sun. They are gorgeous, gorgeous. I didn't plant enough of these last year, so we'll definitely do more of those this year. And that's it for the flowers. But like I said, I'm going to plant some leafy greens too. And so, oh, I missed one flower. I missed one. There is a Petunia Easy Wave. Now, I only have two of, of a few of these. These were pelleted seeds. These were pelleted seeds and um, I've had them for this will be the third year. So I'm not expecting them to germinate very well. Typically pelleted seeds don't last very long. When you put that clay coating over them, they usually don't last for as many years as a non pelleted seed. So these are white standard easy wave petunias um, so they should wave out I think about a foot and a half if I remember correctly but again they're only white and so we will give them a try I'm not expecting much from those and then we get to the leafy greens for the leafy greens we've already planted kale and now we're going to go ahead and start some um, additional leafy greens now my leafy greens, I could just start them from seed. I can direct sow them right into the garden. I don't have to, to start the seeds indoors, but I want to get a jump on the season like I always do. And so we're going to go ahead and start a few of these. And so we're going to do some collard greens. Here's the pack. There's nothing on the pack, but it, you can see the name. They're champion collard greens that I got off of Amazon. I don't know much about this particular supplier, but they're on Amazon. Here's a picture of what they're going to look like when they come in. And so we will be growing them. Now I have my old faithful Morris head collard greens, which I will be direct sowing in the garden. So I'm not going to do any um, starting starts for those. But for the ones that I purchased online that I don't know much about the company, I am going to do starts so I can make sure I get good germination. I don't want to wait till I get to the garden and find out I got a dud. And then I also bought some um, Southern Giant curled mustard greens from the same company. And here's a picture of mustard greens if you've never seen those before. Now, some people say that mustard greens have a little spiciness to them. I personally don't think so, but I love a good mustard green. I like to mix my mustard greens and turnip greens together. Ooh, we delicious, y'all, delicious. But it's not time for turnip greens. Um, we'll be direct sowing those right into the garden. So those are the leafy greens we're gonna start today. And then, you know what, why not? I need to keep sowing lettuce. I don't wanna ever run out again. So we're gonna sow two more types of lettuce. We're going to sow this prize head leaf lettuce. Now this lettuce, 
honestly has not germinated well for me in the past year, but I know I had crappy soil, so we're gonna try it again. Prize head leaf lettuce, um, let's see what kind it is, loose leaves, and they're kind of curly around the edges. It says they're crisp, sweet, and tender. And it says this lettuce has been around for over 130 years. That's pretty cool, if I can get it to grow. So we're gonna do that one, and we're gonna do an iceberg lettuce. Again, this is from that same company that I found on Amazon. Here's a picture of the lettuce that we'll be starting today. So those are the ones we're gonna to start today. Let me get them all in. I already have my containers ready right here for all of these different seeds that we'll be starting today. And uh, let me get those in. Now, one of the things I do wanna talk about for some of these seeds, for some of them, the petunias and the begonias, I'm gonna need to start them on a heat mat. They need to be started in a very uh, moist and very warm. It says they need to be very warm when you start them. And so I will be adding these to my heat mat where I have my peppers growing right now. I got room for a couple of those. But my indoor growth space is already extremely warm to begin with. So hopefully for the ones I can't get on my one heat mat, my seed starting um, heat mat that I have, hopefully it's warm enough in there with the lights and everything else, everything else germinates. Um, the other thing about petunias and I believe the begonias as well is that I'm only going to surface sow. So let me take a couple minutes and let you see me go through that process because we're not covering them up. So I'm gonna let you see that process as I get started. And then I'll just move on because you don't need to see me plant seeds because you've seen it a million times by now. For this very first seed here, this one right here, Let's get it open so you can see the process. And begonia seeds are so tiny. Oh, they're so tiny. As well as petunia seeds, like they look like dust. I'm sure you can't even see this. It looks like dust, right? It's so tiny. You see that? I'm trying to put it on a white background right there. It's how tiny that is, it's like dust. And so we're gonna just put it right on the top. Now it says there's at least 50 seeds in here. I don't know how they counted that out because it's dust. Now I am using a Jiffy seed starting mix and I boil, I'm, I sterilize my mix first. I get boiling hot water and I mix it in my seed starting mix to kill any kind of larva that might be lurking in the soil. Now you don't have to do that. Um, you can use whatever kind of mix you want. This is just what I prefer. Hoo wee I am going to try to capture these seeds in two containers. That's my goal. It's not like I can even see the seeds. Oh, well, I tried to get them all out. So the actual directions say surface sow, keep uniformly moist and very warm and grow them indoors eight to 10 weeks before the last frost. I don't see them, but they there. I know they're there. I'm not going to put any soil on top of them. I am going to kind of give them just a little pat to keep them from flying away. They're there somewhere. I'm trusting that they are there because <laughs> I can't see them. And I'm going to need to do this for all of the petunias and the begonias. So let me get to that and then I will bring you back and we'll talk about the next step. So let me tell you how much I paid for these things. So it says it's a minimum of 50 seeds and I paid $4 for this pack. And if you think about how much you pay for these indoor or at the um, nurseries and everything, 
you know, you're saving quite a bit of money if you can grow them yourself. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. And let me get these all planted up and then I will bring you back. Now, having a coated seed um, or pelleted seed is always easier to handle. I don't even know if you can see these, but they're a light brown and they're big enough to handle versus not being able to even see the seeds. But these are super old. They might not grow, but we're going to try. And I put all of them in there because I don't think that they're going to grow. Now, I have a ton of begonia seeds a ton of them and again they are super tiny where's my begonias they're right here it's like dust i probably just put 500 seeds in my hand for these seeds i will have to up pot all of these once they germinate to separate them out because there's probably mm, 100 seeds growing in each one of these little containers. You know what? That probably was not a good idea. Oh, well. I did it now. I probably just mixed the seeds together. I should have just used my hand to push them down. Once they germinate, I should be able to tell the difference between a begonia and a petunia because that's what I did. It's not like I mixed colors together. For these, it says press into the surface. Of course, they're tiny. And the gazinias, it says I need to plant these a quarter of an inch deep. They must be larger seeds. Yes, they are. So that's it for the flowers. Now we're going to move over to the lettuce and the leafy greens. For my mustard greens, I am going to plant them about a quarter of an inch deep. And my goal is to plant three per cell or four. <laughs> How many ever I can get my shaky hands to drop in there. Collard greens, same thing. And, the, and if you don't know how deep to plant your stuff, read your seed packs. This seed pack says a quarter of an inch to a half inch deep. So... That's just what we're doing. For the lettuce, I'm almost going to surface sew. It says an eighth of an inch deep. So that's not very deep at all. So we're going to go almost surface sewing. So basically, I'm going to put the seeds in and just press them in lightly. And that's how we're going to do that. This is the iceberg lettuce head or iceberg lettuce seeds. They're a very light color. These will have to be up potted. And I just put them in the wrong pocket. I'm glad I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> it says an eighth of an inch. So, I mean, that's like nothing. That's like right on top. I have everything started and ready to go. Let's move over to the grow tent so I can explain to you how we need to manage the flower seeds. And we got some stuff to harvest over there. So let's go over there. Now I am over in the garden space and this is my seed starting mat right here. And I have peppers in here. I currently have peppers on my seed starting mat and I need to put the flowers on here as well. So I can only hold six. I've already measured. So I'm going to make sure I get one of everything. Now I got room for one more. Let's see, what are we going to get? Let's use this one. Now, while I'm over here, let's take a minute and look at the soil because I can help you with how to water. So let's do that real quick. So here are two containers, and hopefully you can see this, but this container is a light brown and it's super light. This container is a dark, almost black in color, and it's kind of heavy. This container is good. 
this container needs water. So this is when you need to water if you don't know the difference. But there they are. I just wanted you to be able to see them. The one thing that I forgot to mention when it comes to starting your young seedlings, when you plant your seeds, you should give them a good spray of water on top. I forgot to talk about that step. Kind of give your seeds a good jump start. This is the only time that I water from the top is when I have young seedlings that I am just starting. Once you give them that spray from the top, then you water from the bottom for the rest of the time as they're germinating. So I have these in, they're on the heat mat. They're getting up to, I think I moved it up to 79 degrees. And so these need heat to germinate and they're already on the heat mat. I'm gonna to have to get these watered in. So I'm gonna water from the bottom and let it absorb from the bottom. So these are ready to go. I have my shop light already on. I have them just a few inches above the containers and the lights go on and off. Um, they're on a timer. They're on for 14 to 16 hours. Um, this is just a standard shop light, but I believe this is like an 8000K. So it's one of the brighter shop lights. This is not a grow light. Your flowers could take up to 21 days or more to germinate if you don't have the temperature right. And the soil needs to be very warm. So these are ready to go. Now, I do have a few more flowers over here that I could not get on the heat mats because there just wasn't room. And so these will just have to sit right here close to the heat mat. And with all the lights and everything on in here, it usually stays pretty warm. So hopefully they will germinate as well. For the other items that I started today, the iceberg lettuce and the leafy greens, I have them on the shelf up above. And I'm going to have to lower this one down just a little bit to get them a little closer to the plants. And here they are. They're ready to go as well. These are watered in really well. No need to water for those. So everything's in. We need to get these watered in just below here. But I don't know if you recall, but I said I got a little bit of harvesting to do. I got some lettuce to pick as well as some tomatoes. So let's pick that lettuce next. Look at it. Finally, y'all, we got lettuce. So this is La La Rosa that we're going to harvest here for our meal today. We're making a spaghetti dinner and we need a salad. So La La Rosa is being harvested. La La Rosa is a leaf lettuce and let me see if I, did I cut that already. Cut it. And I'm cutting it pretty clean because I need this lettuce, y'all. Now, this right here is butter crunch, and it's actually too thick. There's way too many in here. So we are going to take this side for sure. And that should give this side a little more room to do what it needs to do. This one right here, that's ruby red. We're going to take all of this. And the very top here, this is Gustav. Gustav is coming in gorgeous. Oh, it's so pretty, pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. I really should wait. I should wait. Y'all, can I take some of this Gustav too? If I just wait, it'll be so big and pretty. We'll just take a little bit, just a little bit. I need to make sure I got enough for my salad today. Look at the little cute head. Look at that. This is so pretty. Now this is, it could use another week maybe and it'll be really big and pretty, but we'll add that to our salad today. And some of these are sewn so thick. I really need to get one of them out just so the other one has room to grow. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I started these from seed versus transplanting. And when you do that, you really need to thin them out to give them room to grow, which I didn't do. This is more than enough for a salad today and tomorrow for my family. Now let's grab some of these tomatoes. 
these are my micro dwarf tomatoes. And I think this is like my third harvest on them now. I'm getting a few more than what I need from what I call snacking. I have Tiny Tim's in here and Orange Hat. That seems to be what's growing right now. Now look at this. Indoor tomatoes. Look at them. I mean, there are a ton of tomatoes on here. I don't know if you can see it, but look at all of these tomatoes. They are coming in nicely now. Now, the peppers are doing well too, but we're not picking these peppers. Oh, that's heavy. And it's just starting to turn, but we're not picking that today. That's not what we're here for. Here's another pepper back here looking good. And there are more peppers around the side here. They're all looking good. But that's not why we're here today. All right, I'm gonna have to end here. I could stay here all day and sharing with you everything that's going on in the garden. But we are just here for some lettuce and tomatoes to go with onions from last year so we can have a nice salad with our meal today. Thank you for joining me as I'm doing some more work getting ready for this year's season. I got some the flowers started, so hopefully they'll be coming in really soon. We got our dinner harvested, and I call that a good day. We've had a good day. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications because I'm here every two or three days or so bringing some kind of new content. So until next time, and I hope there will be a next time at Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.